week. I guess it was Tuesday, apparently. I don't I think we went straight in the lab on Thursday, right? We didn't do anything. Yeah, we went to finish it. Yeah. So there are three new functions that we're learning. There, it's technically trigonometry, but it, it's not anything super complex. Actually, pretty easy. The grades in prior years have always been pretty good for this quiz. Um, there's only one hard part, which is what we'll get to today, and then you'll have practice time on it tomorrow. Uh, there are these functions called sine, cosine, and tangent. So here's some of the notes you need to take. You weren't here, phones up. We don't touch phones. Again, earbuds, we don't touch ear. We shouldn't have earbuds in, so take earbuds out. Um, you show me that you care at the beginning of this quarter, and we can change at least the earbuds first. Nobody has phones in any of my classes during my semester. Because you have this is your EOC quarter. You got an EOC coming up in a month and a half. Like we start EOCs right at the beginning of May. I think we might be a little bit. You start EOCs though in April. So we don't have a lot of time in this quarter. You're going to miss a lot of classes for testing. So you won't have as many grades. You won't have as much time to do um, catch up on e, you know for the EOC, which is thirty percent of your semester grades. So uh, these are just functions like adding, subtracting, squaring, taking the square root. But we they're a little more complex than those, so we have to really spend a little time on what exactly they are. First note: they are for right triangles. That's your first note. Only for right triangle. They do not apply to any other triangle. So if you don't have a right triangle, it's not going to work. Um, they can be used when you can't use a squared, b squared, c squared for sides. A squared, what, what do we need if we want to solve for the side using a squared, b squared, c squared? You need two sides, right? I need two of those three. It doesn't matter which two, but I need two. I can't solve an equation if I have two variables. I can solve an equation if I only have one variable. I need two of the three. If we're using this, we only need one of the three. We don't need two of the three. But then we also need an angle. So if I have one angle and one side, I can do this. Or, depending on what I'm solving for, sometimes they will give you two sides, but you'd be solving for an angle. So, um, solving for angles. And again, you would need two sides for that. That. And again, this had nothing to do with solving for angles up here. I was strictly solving for one of the missing sides, or the missing side. All right, so with that in mind, what are my formulas? Cosine is and tangent is. So those were the three formulas I told you. I told you you'd have to memorize those, that I wasn't going to give them to you because we don't get them on the reference sheet. Now, the good news, they are on the reference sheet. Uh, I didn't even notice that they were. They, I don't remember them being on there last year. Maybe they were, and I didn't even notice it. But if you looked at the reference sheet when you did that cycle test, they are at the bottom. Uh, so there's the special right triangle. Oh, oh that's right. You have a good look, I mentioned that last time. So here's your next quiz. You'll have some right triangle stuff. You had one exit ticket that had a super easy right triangle question, which most people got, and that was actually worth two points. Um, oh, here's the other thing about exit ticket for the guy. It saves some of your buttons, first of all. Your experience. So the other piece, though, was some of you set it up correctly on that, like you knew it was a squared, b squared, c squared, you put stuff in the right spot, but then you didn't get the algebra correct. 
So I made that one two points also. I don't think originally I was going to make that one two points. I think I was going to make the last one that we did two points. I made it two points and I made it to where if you got the setup correct, you got one out of one, but then you missed the algebra, you just got zero out of zero. So some of you won't see a grade in for that. You'll see the little asterisk thing. But in the notes, I wrote this. Like, you know how it has a little dot, the three little dot breadcrumb things. In the notes, it says this. That means you got one out of one for it. I just, there was no way to, to put that into the grade when, when I made it worth two points. So I'll have to manually adjust that. It wasn't a ton of people. Most people either got zero or they got both points, but some of you will see that. Um, and some of you got two out of two, which again, that helps a lot when we don't have a ton of time to put very in. And then there was one other one worth two, which was the proving similarity, which we still are struggling with that. We're gonna talk more about that tomorrow. All right, so. These are on there. It says specifically sign. Oh, it uses this symbol. I haven't really talked about what that symbol is. That just means the angle. That's like a generic way to say the angle. So it's called theta. It's a Greek symbol. It's on your reference sheet. It's not in your book problem. Uh, why the book doesn't use it and it's on your reference sheet, I don't know. But just understand that means the angle or angle sign of it's called theta, it's a Greek symbol. I believe it's pretty sure it's theta. So the angles. So the sine of the angle normally will use the actual angle. Like we'll say sine of angle B, sine of angle A. But on the um on the on the reference sheet, since they, they're not talking about an angle yet, they just say sine of theta, which means sine of the angle. Uh, so the next thing, make sure you are always determining or determine is what I'm the right. So determine opposite. And this is the only part you have to do since you don't have to memorize it anymore. And you do that from the angle you're using. So determine the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse from the angle you use. So the, the opposite and the adjacent can change depending on which angle. Hypotenuse won't change. That's always across from the right angle, we said. But for the adjacent and the opposite, if I change angles, then those change. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, actually, let's do that next. All right, so here's what I mean. Here's a right triangle. Oh. Right faster. Could have already had all the other things. Huh? Angle you use, yeah. It's recorded. You good, Israel? Right. So if I use angle A, and I wanted to use the sign again, you don't have to memorize them. So sign of A. Actually, the sign is always opposite over hypotenuse. I don't know why they said A there, but they, I would say the opposite is across from, right? So that's the opposite from A. And the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So that doesn't ever change. You can always label that hypotenuse and it won't change. So hypotenuse never moves. So this would be the opposite, right? But if I would have said, well, what's the sine of B, angle B? Well, then the opposite is this side. So again, you have to make sure you think, okay, from the angle that they're, they're asking about or they're giving me or that I'm using, whatever words you need to use, Opposite would you go from that angle across to get the opposite, and then whichever one is touching it. So the blue goes with B, and the red goes with A. 
So again, for A, all the red apply. So for A, this is the adjacent because it's touching angle A. This side is touching angle A, part of angle A. Again, hypotenuse doesn't change, opposite of the cross. But for angle B, it's all the blue stuff. So you can see the opposite and the adjacent will change depending on whichever angle you're talking about. Again, if that's all confusing, you need to know one thing and one thing only. Write this down again if you need to. Just go from the angle you're using. Either they're going to ask you to solve for the angle or they're going to give you the angle measure. You go from that angle across to get the opposite. And then the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. And then the third side is always the adjacent side. Should be touching the angle you're talking about. So whatever words you need to explain that process when you go through and practice it, probably tomorrow you'll practice it more. Um, you got to have that down. That's the biggest mistake since you don't have to memorize it. That's the biggest mistake people are going to make is labeling the sides wrong or not changing them if I tell you to solve for a second measure and the second measure means you have to change angles. Any questions on that? I don't know if this is going to add anything to All right. So now onto the new stuff. And we'll do more of you. We're going to start reviewing for your EOC a little bit every class. Well, every block class. Oh, you have an exit ticket, by the way, on Thursday of this week. It will be on these relationships, these trig relationships. We'll probably just have to solve for like a side or an angle. Probably, probably for a side, probably what we do first. We did not do that last class. I guess we went straight into the new something. All right, so turn to page. Oh, there we go, 155. So again, this is still the same exact thing. Trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent. We're just adding in two new definitions, which are normally going to relate to word problems so you will have some word problem stuff associated with this next quiz won't be super difficult you need to know these two definitions they're in your book i'm going to use my words to explain them so angle of elevation angle of depression So first of all, I want you to imagine that you will you it doesn't have to be a person, by the way, but in this case, we refer a lot of times it is a person that you I'm looking straight out, right? Imagine a line going straight out from my eye. What's true about that line? It is straight, it is straight out, it is straight. What's also true about that line? Ah, it's a really important piece right there. I am standing dead straight up. With what? So that line, so that's a big one. So write that down. If you didn't get that, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. I'm looking straight out. So you, if you want to hold off on writing, I'm looking straight out. There's a line going straight out. I'm standing straight up, vertical. If that's horizontal, I mean, you can look at the. I didn't do this last step. This won't show up on the. I'll do it during my break. I'm a little more. Okay. If you kind of imagine the bricks, though, from one of the vertical lines, say that's a person standing up, and then the line going out to the right, looking that way, could be looking that way, it would matter. That would be the line of sight. It's a 90 degree angle. You can kind of see how that would be a 90 degree angle. We're going to see it again. What is also true about that line? Is that a 90 degree angle? What's true about that specific line in the ground? They are parallel. That's the other thing. The line of sight is parallel to the ground. So they've already drawn the figure for you. You will have to draw figures for this, I would think. You'll see if you get something. So his line of sight 
is that line right there. Now they don't have a line for him because they're not using him. So there's no right angle there. But in the next one we do, there will be. Actually read the problem real quick. Example one. And again, there's already a picture there. I don't think they would give you the picture. I think you would probably just have this and you would have to draw the picture, but you can look at the picture right now for this lesson. There's a check problem you're going to do that doesn't have a picture. So I'll give you a minute to read that. There are two or three pieces that are important. One of them that we already or two of them we've already talked about. So let me, I'm going to do a tennis real quick on my board while you're doing that. Okay, um, so here's the pieces of this that are important. Angle of elevation would be, again, imagine that you can look at the picture, the red line is me looking straight forward. If I look up, that's gonna create an angle between the, my line of sight that's parallel to the ground and the angle I look at up, just like this to create an angle. In this case, they tell you that that angle is 30 degrees. That is the angle of elevation. It's the measure of the angle using a parallel line of sight versus an, an elevated line of sight. You should have elevate means up. If you go up, elevate go up. So again, that's an angle of elevation. Parallel and then looking up. Angle of depression is just the opposite. If I were standing up on a mountain looking straight ahead, that would be my angle or my line of sight. And then if I look down onto the ground, that would be angle of depression. It's just from the parallel line. Now I draw a line going down. Again, from a parallel line drawing up, angle of elevation, from a parallel line looking then looking down, that's angle of depression. Now we just have to realize, which Marcus already told us, it's going to also be a right triangle in some way, shape, or form. If I'm looking up, and if we're looking up at, a, at some kind of a object in the air, I'm going to also have a distance from that object down to the ground. That's what's going to create my right angle. You would measure the height of something vertical. So here's the the piece that becomes tricky. I mean, there are a couple of pieces that are tricky. But this is the one I think more people make a mistake on in the setup. Don't forget about the person's height. Somehow you need to take that into it. You ready to go? All right, let me finish going over this. Uh, the height of this object is going to normally have to take into account that that guy is six feet tall. Or if I'm standing on a platform looking down, I'm gonna have to add height to it. Because when I create a right triangle, I can't just, they're probably not gonna just give me the size. I'm gonna have to do some math to figure out what the actual right triangle is. So in this case, what would the math be? 
Yeah, I know that the height of the drone is 102, right? But when I create the triangle, I'm doing it from my line of sight. So I have to subtract the height of that person. I'm doing it basically from his eyes, which typically you'll be doing it from the eyes of something, not always a person. Like in the next one, it's a big wooden dog, but same concept. So now I've got everything I need. I want you to try to solve for. They want to know what is the distance he is from the drone, which again would be from his eyes. That's it. You can't you can't make one thing from his eyes and then make one thing from his feet. That would be. So what is X? I want you to try to solve for X. I'll give you a hint in a second. Do you think you get started? I mean, the, your hint is it involves one of the three equations, sine, cosine, or tangent. Try to set it up, Camila, and then if you set it up, you can go. You can just call it. Just try to pick the correct function. It's either sine, cosine, or tangent. You have information, so just match up the information with one of those formulas. I'll give you a hint if you don't understand what information you have. That's the three things. Well, one of them you don't know, but you you need to use it, solve for it. But try to set up or at least choose the correct function. So at the very least, when I walk around in a second, you better have which function you think it is. Sign, cooks on your team. Okay, here's your first hint. Remember, it's always from where the angle is. I've highlighted the angle. It only gave you one. You never do anything from the right angle. Always going to be from one of the other angles. So from that angle, what are we using? Which form? Which which, which function? What's x an angle? X is a distance. So from the angle, which Function when I use. Again, you're going to use the size where you either have information or you're trying to solve. Write down which function it is with the release. Exactly. Yeah. See, I'm going to be doing this a lot this quarter. Especially with this class, because there aren't that many people. Switch function at it. I think you said the right thing. A 143, I mean, we just did them, but 143 was the three functions. Yeah, 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 we get out. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what it's Uh, So which side, this is the part that's so hard about the picture, yeah. Well, he has been. Oh, okay, so what does it give him? He can feel that there. Yes. Right, so here's your feel that that's your angle right there. So 30 degrees is the angle. Where is the opposite? You can show me the opposite side. If that's that's where you also have the number. The number over there. But here's the tough one. So 102 is not the triangle itself. So like if you feel down there below the triangle, see how it still goes down. So if you need to come over here, so come find my finger, go right here. Have a person standing there, some kind of motor. Is there a description? Is that what they're going to be? What is this like here? Okay, so that's the measure of the angle. So you have to read the description of what's happening. Is that 30 degree angle? is from a person's eyes. So this 102 that you felt over here on the far right, we have to subtract from the height of the person. So it's actually 96 for the triangle. So this triangle that you were feeling, the far right side of that is actually 96. I mean, that's the I mean, See if you can find the person's height, but again, the visualize that and not see that. Yeah, I would say read that and see if it should say in there somewhere that he's six feet tall. Looking again, the visualizing, you, then you have to know how to visualize the picture too, which they, they do too. I don't think they get the picture. Like 
this one's already solved out. That's why they have the picture, but right. they've got to be able to picture that part too. Uh, all right, so. Um, so that's definitely the right function. Oh yeah, think about it. Draw it all the way out. So that would be the correct function. So if you want to, so fill in what, what would be the output would be the yeah. Um, what you say, Mike? So again, I feel like quite a few people are in pretty good shape. So again, if I know that's the angle, I'm going to use that 30 degrees. Every side that I label is going from that angle. Well, sort of. So from 30, what's the 96 going to be? It's the what? It's the opposite, right? I go across the 96. So that's going to be my opposite. Now the X, I don't really have to use the 30 degrees because what's true about the X? Like how would I label that? Yeah, and again, I'm really using the 90 degree angle for that to label the hypotenuse. So if those are the two sides I have, opposite and hypotenuse, what's the formula I have to use? Which, which one of the functions uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? Yeah. So you'd use the sine of angle A equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now we just plug stuff in. What is angle A? 30, right? Angle A is 30. And that equals the opposite, which is 96 over X. Finish out real quick. Now, here's how you solve. When you know the angle, you're going to use the regular tangent cosine sine button. When you know the angle. And you're just going to say sine of 30. So what did you get when you did that? Some of you did it. So do it in your calculator if you didn't do it. Just say sine. 30 and hit equals. Get what? 0.5, right? So 0.5 is the sine of 30 degrees. Now you're just doing algebra to solve. Uh, I will tell you, I think it is a much easier problem to solve using a proportion than any other algebra. So what would I do to make it a proportion? Anybody remember that part? Proportion means we're going to cross multiply. So I need. So do what? Yeah, it doesn't matter that it's a decimal. I can still put it over one. Um, you can go ahead. So now to solve, I cross multiply. 96 times one equals some of you are still setting up another fraction we don't set up another fraction we say 96 times 1 equals 0.5 times x so i get 96 equals 0.5 x how do i solve for x then Yeah, I want to get x by itself, so I need to do opposite math. Well, if this is 0. 0.5 times x, then I need to divide. That's the opposite of multiplication. So your final answer should have been 192. Any questions on that? I try to do not the check problem. Go down to the example with the angle of depression. That one's a little trickier. There's one thing you got to kind of catch in that problem, um, or else you'll get it wrong. So be careful on that one. Same concept, just we're looking down, or the dog is actually looking down instead of a big wooden dog, big big dog. Isaiah. Wakey, wakey. Come on, try this one. This one's not as easy. This is not just like the one you did. And, it, and it's it's not only different because of the angle of the depression. There's something else in there that's different. So, so try to do angle of depression with the dog. 
this one the airport two I'll ask if anybody has any good swimming bird stories. Any good ones? Good one, though. Good one. When did you get that? Yeah, you're in the school. You get four weeks. That was fun. That's fun. I remember when I still remember when mine's 14, almost 14 years old. Well, actually closer to 13. It'll be 15 this year. Still remember when he, my the girl I was dating at the time, said she found him. But I didn't want to go home. And she found him. But I still remember when we brought him into the house. He was so scared. He wouldn't. He went underneath the table. He wouldn't come out from the table. Yeah, he was super cute. Still out. He's tough. Yeah, he's he's thirteen, going on fourteen this year. Yeah. Yeah. Hanging in there. He's had two surgeries. He can't see. He struggles to walk. But he's hanging in there. And I didn't even want a dog. She, after, not, I love dogs, but like I know they're a lot of work. She didn't want them after six months. So basically, he went and got a dog. Oh, I didn't want my hand. I'll be honest, I don't know. I work out something sequence into the last class. So that would be close if you round it. So we'll see what we get. Uh, I'm going to draw it out in a second. So we'll go over the whole thing. You do it. All right. So try to do something. Don't sit there and do nothing. Do this. Try to idea the entry and compare it with what Ooh, I like that drawing. That's the tricky part right there. Once you draw it out like that, you should be good. Nobody else has think that it's post spring break. Spring break and it's like small. I don't know what it's called. Gotta keep it in. Big quarter. Um there. Everything around me. That's um yeah, that's what Sandy also did. Come on, man. All right, so just so we can spend this more time, a lot of you didn't do anything on this. So if you want to get out of this no phone, no earbud stuff, you gotta work. Like I walked around, I think two people that work. That's not gonna get you out of no phone, no earbuds. Um, and it's just going to make me mad. You don't want me mad. Uh, I would always draw out my own figure. I would yeah, do what you want. They may not even have a figure there, so you may have to draw it. But if I have the height of the dog's eyes, so the dog's eyes are up there, I'm looking down at some object. Oh, um, and again, remember height, when you hear height in it, that's going to be vertical, right angle, right triangle, that kind of stuff. Height's a big key word for right triangle stuff. Not always going to mean you have to use right triangle, but so if I'm measuring height, I got a right angle there. And then they give me some information. This is where you have to know your definition. Angle of depression means... If I draw in that line of sight from the dog's eyes, I have an angle of depression right there that is 40 degrees. What else do they give me? Nayland, what do they give me? Yeah, it says that the dog, and again, from the eyes, and that's the only way you can solve it. Just remember that it's always got to be the eyes. Thank you. We're just now getting to the next one. So they tell me 30 feet is that size. 
Now, if they give me one more side, like if they had said, and the dog's feet are whatever from the hydrant, I could just do right triangle. But don't forget about right triangle because sometimes that's going to be what the question is trying to, to get you to do, just right triangle, A squared, B squared, C squared. But if I only have one side, can't do A squared, B squared, C squared. And the other hint is they gave me something about an angle. If they're giving me something about an angle, then that might lead toward trigonometry. Because right triangles, the A squared, B squared, C squared didn't have anything to do with angles. So with that in mind, oh, and what am I solving for? What's it ask for? Horizontal distance from, actually horizontal means not the hypotenuse. So there's another key word. Horizontal means not hypotenuse. Hypotenuse will typically not be a horizontal when it's word problem. So that means I've got to be solving for this side down here. And it does say. Hmm? Horizontal is that way. Vertical is height. Yeah, vertical and height are the same. Sometimes it'll say vertical height. But yeah, horizontal that way, vertical that way. So that means we're solving for the distance on the ground. So with that in mind, what function am I going to use? Anybody notice a little problem? It's like something that. So do we know the hypotenuse? And are we solving for it? So would we use hypotenuse? No. So we use hypotenuse. No way, right? There's a little bit of an issue in this one. Here's why I said this one's trickier. So let's fill in some information. So here's your first step. I would just fill in information. Like don't start trying to solve. You guys try to jump to solving too fast. Fill in what you know. Chance, what else do we know? Uh, we know the thing. So uh, we're given that. But what else do we know if that's 40 degrees? What other sides? The A is the, the hypotenuse, right? So again, I could label that hypotenuse if I wanted. So that's hypotenuse. Uh, the diagram, the C angle. Look well, that. there's two angles though. That's the problem. What is C? What what angle? Because again, it's got letters, right? I'll now I'll write the letters. A, B, C, D. Now use letters, but you got to use multiple letters because there's two angles coming out of C. I was talking about the C, C, D, A. Right, so C D A is 90s. Letter, you weren't in here when we did it, but I don't know what you did before. So D, okay, so what is that angle? How do you know that one? Close. Alternate interior. That's good. That's good. So we know. So what is it? That one's also 40. Again, that has to do, well, so what's true about AB then? Let's talk about AB and DC, Let's say that. Uh, yeah. Well, no, the lines, line AB and line DC, what's true about them? They're parallel lines, right? We said that. The line that I am looking out at is parallel to the ground. I think I said that, if I didn't, that's, that's always gonna be true. The line, the, that's how we find angle of elevation. I'm looking out parallel to the ground. So if that's a parallel line, so if that's a parallel, oh, that didn't work. I did it too fast. So if that's a parallel line to that line there, then that's a transversal. They're alternate interior angles. If you didn't get that, you don't really need it. There's a better one that you can figure out. What's also true right in that area? DAB, what's true about DAB, the big angle, DAB? It's a right angle, right? If this is straight up, and again, that's got to be parallel, that's also a right angle up here. So what do I know about the other piece of that right angle? 
Yeah, I could fill again. Don't worry about solving so much, just filling stuff in. What else do I know? There's more I can fill in. The dash line. What do I know about the dash lines? We gotta go. It's also 30. Yeah, that's gotta be 30. That's gotta be X. Now I can use whatever I want. I got plenty of information. I can use 40 and I can use opposite over adjacent. I can use 50 and I could use opposite over adjacent again. So again, now you would say we'll finish that off tomorrow. Um, but again, if you fill in a bunch of information instead of trying to just use what they got gave you, it'll be a lot easier. For you. So that was kind of the trick there is you can't use the, use the picture the way it's set up. Before he was not enough information, you had to be able to fill in some other pieces. Now you should all be able to do that. So I hope you copied it down. That will be your bell work tomorrow for this class. All right, see you guys. Welcome back. So glad to be back to school. I mean, done with that silly, stupid spring break thing. <laughs> Sleeping in late, staying up late. Hey, Chloe. Um, did you look at your grade today? I put a bunch of in there. I think you did well on, on the last year. I think it's um, I hit this morning. I, yeah. I don't remember where you're at. But... Yeah, the Wait, tickets before. definitely helped a lot of people right at the end there. Stop recording.